Hello, everybody. I hope you have had a great morning. My name is Colleen Magnus. Today you are creating with Colleen, and I will teach you what to do. I might teach you what not to do, but I promise to teach you something. And the reason I definitely put that little disclaimer in there is because it has been a crazy morning here. It has just been, the kids have been fighting. I have a daughter-in-law and two grandchildren we're not feeling good, a brother going to the airport. Um, so we have shuffled around, which is what you do. We shuffle around. So now Danny's taking Kevin to the airport. We're going out for an earlier lunch. And thankfully, Brooke has a 345 appointment so she can get Marley in there to see what's going on. Might be some ear infection. So please keep Marley, Mary Jane, and Brooke in your prayers because you all have a little bit of something. So anyways... We're still gonna to create today. I come to you regardless. And Gwen is always here, my faithful Gwen. Um, and others I'm sure will be popping on. So I'm just gonna to try to get my screen straight where I can see what we're doing here. All right, and Miss Sandy, she's also very faithful too. Love you gals. So as you pop on, I'm gonna to try to keep my stuff here. Um, we're gonna get started because we have, I have a one o'clock lunch date with Kevin and Cheryl before they go back to Iowa. Thoroughly, have thoroughly enjoyed having them here though. Love my brother, that's for sure. Okay, first let's take care of a little bit of business. Tracy Carter, two weeks ago, you, I pulled your name, you won for the um, Hippest Hippo Celebration Card. So I need you to send me your address, send a private message please, and I will drop this card in the mail to you. Because every week, whatever card I create, if you like, share, comment on my page, um, then I go ahead and I do a drawing and whoever I draw gets my card. So Tracy Carter, this is yours, just waiting for you. And Gwen Cooper, congratulations, because I drew your name for the Poppin' Pastels. So this was a technique that we did last month, last month, listen to me, last week. And um, this is your Poppin' Pastels, Gwen. I already have your address because you are on my team. And I appreciate you always being here every week and sharing. I love to see your name pop up. So I will get this in the mail to you today, Gwen. And again, the card today, like, share, comment, follow my YouTube page, all that wonderful stuff. And we'll put you in the name for a drawing. So Steph is here also and Lynn, y'all are just coming on. Um, Oh, Stephanie's actually doing the Poppin' Pastels right now. You go, girl. That is awesome. I'd love to share things with you. So, I promise you I have more than one set. I mean, more sets than soft seedlings. I have been wearing this set out because I love it. What can I say? Um, I did a technique class. Four great techniques with this. I've shared a couple of them with you, and I'm sharing one more today than I promise to move on from my soft seedlings. Um, it's just a great set with a folder. So in the class that I just had, they received the soft seedling stamp, the um, embossing folder, this leaf fall folder. Y'all take a good look and make sure you get it because it does not show well in the catalog, but it's absolutely beautiful. And then a half a pack of the red and green adhesive packed pearls, and then they made four great cards. So hey, Sherry Turner, I'm glad you are here. Glad to see you from West Virginia. So what we're doing today, I'm gonna to show you a technique called faux silk. Gwen has a, had a little comment earlier and said she was kind of scared of it. Gwen, where do you see how easy it is? You gotta love it. This is a card that I am going to create for you. Now this card here, Sandy Rule gets total credit. Sandy Rule, I was in a card swap and it looks so much like hers. The only thing I changed was she had the um, mossy meadow down here, crumb cake up here, and it was not embossed, and she had stamped the leaf. She didn't do the technique on the leaf. But Sandy, you totally inspired me with your card. I loved it. Thank you for sharing it in the swap. And again, Sandy Rule gets credit. So if you can see this, I don't know if you can, this is called faux silk. I hope it shows okay. Um, it's like wrinkly and soft, kind of vintage looking. And that's what I want to be showing you today. Oh, I'm not on my screen, let me come here. It's like a fine line between seeing your screen and seeing your comments. 
So we're gonna get started and faux silk is simply made with tissue paper. That's the really, really cool thing. So I have done technique classes in the past and this was one that we did. I used to do a six by six technique class and it included the directions. So this is one that I did in the class. So when you do faux silk, there's a couple things you can do. You can stamp your image on cardstock. We're gonna crumple up our tissue paper, open it a little bit, glue it on top, and that's what gives you that faux silk look. So that's exactly what I did here. That was stamped on the cardstock. This is stamped on the cardstock too, and then just covered it in white tissue paper. Now I have some samples I'm gonna share with you later. Remember I told you what to do, I might teach you what to do and what not to do. I'm gonna show you both because you can also stamp on the tissue paper and then put that over white cardstock or another cardstock. And you can also, I thought, why can't you do this on designer series paper? So I'll show you my results of all that as we get going. But right now we're gonna create this card. So what you're gonna need is you will need a four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of crumb cake. And you're gonna score that at five and a half. You're gonna need a piece of four and a quarter by three inch mossy meadow. And I did emboss that with the um, leaf fall folder, already done. And y'all know I'll put a picture of this on the Facebook page as soon as I'm done, I've already taken it. You need a two and a half by three and three quarters piece of basic white. Two and three quarters by four inch piece of basic black. And then you're just gonna use a strip of four and a quarter by three eighths inch basic black. And then a piece of twine, about 18 inches. So the, the twine I'm using, it's a Baker's Twine Essentials Pack. So it actually has five colors and it has the black. Well, I used all the black and I can definitely use a piece of crumb cake around it. That's what my sample has. Um, but I really liked the black so I just took this and I dragged it through my memento pad. This was crumb cake. I just put it down, held a, a paper towel on top and just dragged it through the pad. And that's what gave me my black twine. So whenever you have light ribbon, twine or anything, you can always change the color just by inking it. Some people use their blends. Um, and if you do the classic ink or even the memento, give it a little bit to dry because it is in the cloth like that. So hello, Julie, we are just getting started. So what, what you wanna do first is just take that two and a half by three and three quarters basic white, and we are going to stamp the mossy meadow. Let me get that in there. Mossy meadow onto here. Now this pad was a little dry. I couldn't find my other one. I should have inked it. But either way, I have a spare piece already stamped like having a backup. So I will just put this on here. Hard to see when you're not right over it. Okay. And voila. So that one's a little light. Note to self, ink that pad. I couldn't find my original pad. Um, so take the one I like better. There we go. So here you have your leaf that is stamped. And I'm just gonna put that for aside for a minute and get my other stamping done. I'm gonna take my card base of crumb cake. And even though it's folded, you never wanna stamp, no matter how you crease it on something like that when it's folded, because when you go down, it can smear. You always want it to be stamped flat. And that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna take a memento a little bit of thinking of you. Put it down here on the bottom. So there I've got my thinking of you. So here I will crease this. And that embossed piece, the leaf fall embossed piece of Mossy Meadow is simply gonna go on the top. A little bit here and there. So I'll put this here. And whenever I have cardstock or designer paper, 
I don't know why, but that edge just kind of, I want to hide it. So what I'll do here is I'm just going to take that 3 8 inch by 4 and a quarter inch piece of the black. I think it gives it a nice boldness. Again, Sandy did it, and it's wonderful. Um, and I just like to cover that edge. I th to me, it just feels like it's unfinished. And I knew this little pe this glue here has been spitting and sputtering. I'm almost at the end. So this will just go to hide it. Make sure I'm even. You can eye it or say if you wanted to put it on your grid paper, you can see where you're at. Close enough counts. So I'm over just a little bit. Give a little trim here. And there I have that part of my card. So this is my card base. So let's go on to the actual technique. So let me grab a piece of scrap paper. Should have done that earlier. Okay. So when I was doing this, again, years ago, Stampin' Up, this is like a blast from the past, Stampin' Up had glue sticks. Well, we don't have any glue sticks anymore, so I tried first, I took a little bit of the Tombow liquid glue and a paintbrush, and I tried to put it on here, and that was a disaster because this is a classic water-based ink. So it came to life and started smearing. If you like that look, you're going for some artistic thing, um, there's nothing wrong with that, but I wanted my leaf, you know, to be nice and crisp. So you have to hit your granddaughter's craft box. So I went to where Tyler Joe's crafts are, and she had this washable liquid glue. And what's fun is it's purple. So I was like, well, that's cool. It's purple and it dries clear. And it really does. Plus, you'll be able to see exactly where your glue is because you want to cover it. So just take a piece of white tissue paper. Take your aggressions out and really crumple it up. If you're having a bad day, this is a wonderful technique. And then open it again, but you want to leave some of these little wrinkles in here. Just like that. So take your bright purple glue. How fun is that? And you're going to think, oh my gosh, I'm ruining it. It dries clear. Now, if you get some globs on there, that'll take a little bit longer to dry. But trust me, it dries clear. So cover it up. Again, it's good you can see where you're at. Put this tissue paper on top, leaving some of those wrinkles. Pat it down. And then, remember, I had this stamped twice. That's not the front. The front is actually where my purple glue is and where my leaf is. So let me see, somebody says, uh, let me check my comments. See, oh, I should have known it was Sandy because she stamps with her granddaughter all the time. So hello, Julie, Michelle, and Danette. Uh, Sandy said she just got some of those glue sticks for her granddaughter, and now I have to get some white tissue paper. Yes, you do, Sandy. I always have white tissue paper. I get the Costco huge pack because um, I use it all through the year for everything, my gifts and everything. Um, but why not stamping too? So you have this piece, and of course you made it bigger. Now I want to trim a little bit of this down because I want to, um, and it doesn't have to be pretty. I don't want to wrap all that around. I want to wrap this on the edge because I want a nice clean edge for my project. So just wrap, again, it's all being hidden so it doesn't have to be pretty. Jagged works. So when you have this, if you use your, um, Adhesive, speaking of, it's here somewhere. I was creating all morning. Here it is. You can use your stamp and seal. I don't recommend using the liquid Tombow because the tissue paper is so thin when you're trying to put it on there, it's sticking to your fingers because it's going through the tissue paper and it's also tearing. So what you want to do is just take that beautiful bright purple glue and just fold this over. And again, this piece was stamped on both sides, but I liked the other side better. And so I always tell people, it's like you're getting two cards in one because everything is stamped twice. So you can see where that glue is pretty much drying. So I'll give it just a minute, but 
The other thing you could do, I'd love to give it that shimmer, and I think it kind of seals the um, tissue paper also, is to use the shimmer paint, the champagne shimmer paint. If you've stamped with me at all, um, you should have it. It's just a little bit of a shimmer paint. I talk about it every week. Put it in with the 70% alcohol, the lower content, and spray. So you can still buy this. It was never exclusive to Stampin' Up, but they carried it before, and I just hope they bring it back because it makes everything so pretty. Um, Stephanie said she put a little bit of Tombow glue on the silicone mat and then sponged it with the sponge and put that over the top. That would, Yeah, that could work, Stephanie, but you just have to be careful because being a classic ink, when it gets wet, it's easy to come to life again, which is good and bad depending on the technique you're doing. So I'm just going to take my shimmer paint. And give this a light mist. Actually, it was a heavy mist, but oh well, it's still pretty. Push that down there. And then you can see, I hope, let me check my computer. Oh, I'm way behind. I am lagging here. I'm like still trimming and gluing the edges. Oh, Facebook's not keeping up with me. Okay, well, hopefully you'll see this here. And that is the image. So I go back to my card. And I'm just going to take the basic black. And if you want to, I tend to be more symmetrical because um, I was a drafter, so I try not to be symmetrical. You could actually, the way these were, you could actually cut it and put it on there like that. Or you could do how Sandy Rule did, which I liked, and they were just off-centered a little bit. So I'll put this here. And I can put this right here. So let me see. So um, that's right, Gwen. Gwen said it's not as difficult as I thought. It's really not, Gwen. And you've heard me say before, I had a teacher one time who said it's easy once you know how. And that's so true. I'll never forget that. I've got his name, but I'll never forget what he said. Because the bottom line is, even if it's rocket science, if you know it, it's easy then. So I put on some dimensionals. Um, Stephanie asked what the ratio of the alcohol to the shimmer paint is. There's no exact measurement, Stephanie. I pretty much, I just get a random little spray bottle. I fill it with the 70% alcohol, and then I put, say, maybe five drops of the shimmer paint in there. Shake it up because it settles to the bottom, and then spray something and see if it's shimmery enough for you. So... Um, Definitely see if it's shimmery enough, and if not, you can add more. You just can't take it out. And Michelle Avance, God bless you for reminding me to put my twine on. <laughs> Again, show you what to do, what not to do. I'm going to show you something. Thanks, Michelle. I owe you. So this is about an 18-inch piece. I'm going to leave a little bit at the end, and I'm just going to wrap it around twice, and then come on in here. And actually, since I already have dimensionals on it, I'm just gonna kind of lay it there and tie a knot. Michelle, you saved the day. You're awesome. Because you really do need a little bit of twine. And again, you could use the crumb cake. I am using that memento, black memento piece. I'll let dry, hopefully enough. And just gonna tie that on there. Give a little snip. Oh, thank you, it's just not the same without it. And then for these later, I can, you know, kind of give a little bit of a twist to undo some of that twine. I like the rattly look. The rustic, I should say. Now let me do that a little bit more. Pull it apart some. All right, and you can play with that. So here we go. All right. So now that I have that, I'm going to add a little bit of embellishment, and then I'm going to show you some of the other mishaps that I had this morning. Some worked, some didn't, so I'll save you some time. Um, <laughs> I'll save you some time while I do this. Michelle said, I was screaming at the screen. Well, thank God I looked up. <laughs> That's so funny. And Fran gets this stamp set Friday. Fran, I have a couple different techniques with this stamp set on my Creating with Colleen Magnus YouTube page. I hope you will go check it out because this set has been a lot of fun. So I'm actually using the red and green adhesive backed pearls, which sounds bizarre. Um, the red is red, 
The green is really pretty. It looks more of a soft succulent. Then you have the silver and gold. But I like the little bit of gold here. And y'all know we always work in threes. So that is the card. Again, total inspiration is to Sandy Rule. Thank you, Sandy. Um, I just flopped some colors and put the technique on my leaf, but the rest was her brain. She did good. So let me tell you, again, this here, this is if you stamp on the cardstock, crinkle your tissue paper, and put it on. So that is great. But then I was thinking this morning, oh my goodness, why couldn't you do this to designer series paper? So I thought that was great. So I ran and I got some of the um, Rustic Harvest on page 49. And I thought, let me use these flowers here. I think that's going to look great. Well, guess what? It was a disaster. I went ahead, covered it, did everything. But what I have to remember is that tissue paper is white. It's going to come back white. So I didn't get the effect that I wanted from this as much as I thought because it's the dark colors. I think it's the white on white that really makes it. So then, um, y'all know it's celebration. I thought, let me try one of those papers. So on page six and seven, we have the Rings of Love. And this paper is gorgeous. Thankfully, I saw it in person and got myself a couple packs because it's beautiful. So from now through the end of August, you can get this designer series paper with a minimum $50 order for free, but it's while supplies last, so don't delay too long. So the paper, let me show you just because I didn't know how pretty it was either. You have these great colors right here, and it goes with the Ringed with Nature bundle that we have. These little birds are just phenomenal. Love them, love the colors. This is gorgeous on the background. I really just think you cannot beat stamping up designer series papers. You have some little houses. This is what I tried to do the technique with that I'll show you in just a minute. Who doesn't love some bright little mushrooms and butterflies? Then there's your wooden rings. And then this was really pretty and I thought this would be great for a Christmas paper even. And then you have your trees. So with this paper, I said, well, let me cut one of those medallions and see what happens. So I actually cut the medallion um, with a scallop circle and I put it on Evening Evergreen. But again, with the colors being so dark, I think the white just covers it up quite a bit. So it just depends on what you're looking for. And again, just try. I mean, it's just, it's just paper and designer paper. It's not like we're losing a lot to get out there and really have fun and try creating. And then I was like, okay, apparently you have to have some white background. So I grabbed the other celebration paper on page 14 and 15, and this is awesome. So this is if you place a minimum $100 order during celebration. You get the Wonderful World stamp set, which I've done a video on that a couple weeks ago and this gorgeous designer paper. So one of the sheets of designer paper has these large flowers. So I went ahead and cut one out. And so I did this here, I cut the flower and I put it on white cardstock and the color didn't come through as much as I would like, but still not bad. And I use that artistic folder here. And for the ribbon, we have some new ribbon. And what is it called? It is called Metallic Edge Cotton Ribbon. So in order to give that a color, I took the um, Orchid Oasis, had to think for a minute, um, the ink pad, again, just, you can take a sponge or a dauber, I just used a paper towel. I put it in my ink pad like this, I hold over the top and I pull it through. And then I do that a couple times, I turn it over, get the other side till I get the color that I like. But if you have a white or a vanilla, type ribbon, it's great because then you can make it any color you want with your ink pads or your blends. So that's how I got this Orchid Oasis beautiful silver trim ribbon. So that was with the one flower. Now the second flower I think I had better luck with. Again, it's the same designer paper, but I cut out this one and um, just backed it with a few other colors, put it on some Pierre Pizzazz and just used the white glitter. But you can see what we're working with here. You really kind of need um, an image with a white background 
because then what's in the center is going to pop more, a lot like the leaf does. So that is designer paper, just cut, hand cut and put on paper. Now, one more thing you could do, and again, I suggest, you know, just play with it. Just play with it. You can actually stamp the tissue paper and then put that, as I said, on white cardstock. So as a last minute, because again, this morning was crazy trying to work out details, go to the airport, go to the lunch, get the kids' doctor's appointments. I am not crazy about these, but just to show you, I just grabbed um, our beautiful seashell set. And so here I just have sand dollars I stamped on it. And then of course the other shells. I think it's a little bit too symmetrical for my taste. I think you need something maybe a little bit more vintagey um, that, that could work with it. But who knows, you might like it. Joyce is here and Joyce is my beach gal. She's probably loving it because it's shells and reminds her of the beach. So I'm glad you're here, Joyce. You, we covered a lot of ground. I know you said you were late, but um, go back and watch from the beginning. But I think if you took something like this and did like a script or just softer flowers, crinkle it up, put it on blank paper, I think you would have a beautiful look. So once again, don't be afraid to try. You don't have much to lose. Uh, it's, again, cardstock, tissue paper. Fear has kept a lot of people from doing some wonderful things. So don't let that happen to you. So that, in a nutshell, is what I have to share with you today. Again, this is called Faux Silk. Thank you, Sandy Rule, for your inspiration. And play, play, play. Have some time to create. If there's anything you want to order, please go to my um, blog, creatingwithcolleen.com. You can request my newsletter there. And you can also see all my videos on Creating with Colleen Magnus at YouTube. Don't forget, leave a comment, and I will draw somebody's name for the Thinking of You Softly Seedlings card. So thank you all for joining me. I always wish you the best. And um, I am going to run downstairs, change, and meet my brother for lunch before he's off on his plane. God bless you all. Now let me tell you, I will be gone next week. I will be at the lake, loving life. Um, that's my place. Joyce, you have the beach, I have the lake. So I do plan on coming to you live. I will either post a video, I will be live. You can just see what we're doing. It'll be crazy with six grandchildren. Um, but I will come to you. I won't forget you. And um, I'll share some kind of inspiration, even if it's just samples. So bless you all. Take care. Have a wonderful day. And I will see you next week. Bye-bye.